we're actually going to start a new series that will take us through the rest of this month. But before I tell you what that title is, um, I just want to pose a question up in here about what society tells us about relationships. See, so society has a whole lot to say about relationship. And when I say relationships, I mean, I don't just mean married folks. I mean, maybe you're dating, maybe you're single, maybe you were married and you, uh, you lost your spouse or maybe you divorced, all of that. Society has a whole lot to say about relationships, right? What are some things that you all have heard society, not the Bible, but society say about relationships? Anybody? Just shout something out to me. Y'all can talk to me here today. What have you heard about relationships in culture? Maybe we on TikTok. You've seen something on TikTok before, on Instagram. And don't, don't, don't get quiet now because y'all be reposting a whole lot of stuff. So I know you know what culture is saying, but for some reason we get scared in church. Say that for me. It's a business agreement. Ooh, very interesting. Shout it out back there. It's toxic. Relationships are toxic. Yikes. What else? Maybe a couple more. It's 50-50. That is a, that's a good one. It's 50-50. One more. It's hard work. That's true. That's real talk. I saw one more. Oh, you have to be in a relationship to be fulfilled. How many of you all have ever heard that before? That maybe, so... I'm going to talk to everybody here today, so just, just indulge me here for a moment. You don't have to raise your hand, okay? Those of you that are single in the room, has anybody ever, and if you are under the age of 18, I'm not talking to you about this one, okay? <laughs> uh, legal, legal adults, I'm talking to you. But if you are under the age of 18, listen. I need you listening this whole series. But for this question, I'm talking to those that are adults, okay? Uh, how many of you all that are single, somebody has almost looked at your singleness as a problem. Like, they've asked questions like, how come you ain't married yet? Anybody ever heard that? <laughs> oh, some of you all have. Or, or has anybody ever tried to tell you why God hasn't blessed you with a spouse yet? Anybody ever in the church ever done that before? I saw one hand go up. I want to tell you something. I want to apologize as the church. We have not done the best job of helping singles within church. We have almost made marriage an idol in the church. And it's almost we look if you are single for whatever reason, okay? Because I want to acknowledge there are those of you that in the, that in the room right now, you are single but by choice. Like you like, I, I don't need nobody. Others of you, you just haven't found the one yet. You looking though. You searching. You ready to mingle. Others of you are single by circumstance. Life has happened. And divorce happened. Okay? Others of you are single by loss. Death did you and your spouse a party. So I want to acknowledge everyone in the room is in a different place when it comes to singleness. And if you are married, at one point you weren't, right? You were, you were single at some point, but we as a church have not done the best job. I found this one website because I want to talk to our singles here today, but I'm really going to be talking to everybody. Matter of fact, we've got this amazing series that I'm starting here today that is called, let's put it on the screen for me real quick, Honor the Gift. Everybody say Honor the Gift. Honor the gift. And I want to, as I tell you why, I'm, I'm going to talk to singles here today, but I'm going to talk to everybody. Why are we talking about this whole thing of honor the gift? Well, this whole, the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about relationships. And we're going to be talking about the gift of relationships that God gives to every single one of us. And there's a scripture that I want to share with everybody. This is the scripture for the whole series, and then I'm going to come back and talk to the singles. Can we do that here today? Can we do that here today? Can we do that here today? I just want to make sure we're awake here today. Y'all looking at me like you don't know who I am up here. Like, I, like I'm just like I'm speaking in another language here today. Talk to me here today, okay? Let me share the main scripture for our whole series that we have going on right now. And it comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. And it says, don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? 
Now, I want to make something clear. This is talking to people who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. If you are not a Christian yet, this verse is not necessarily talking to you, but I still want you to listen in because I believe God brought you here today for a reason, okay? When you give your life to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself. I'm going to say that one more time. You do not belong to yourself. No amens on that one. I got one amen for my mama. So people are like, oh, wait, I, no, no, no. I'm, I'm my own person. According to this, you do not belong to yourself. Why? For God bought you with a high price. What was that price? What we just did. His body and his blood. You are not your own. He paid for you. He bought you with his life. That's how much he loved you. I will die for you. So you must, somebody say it with me, honor God with your body. Honor God. We honor God because we were bought with a price. Now, we say that, but what I also realize is that this is difficult for us. What does it mean to honor God? Because that's really what this whole series is going to be about. But I'm going to use it with relationships because all of us are in some place within our relationships. But honoring God is the most important thing that any of us will do. Not one amen up in here today. It's cool. Y'all ain't got to talk back to me today. But you will walk out of here look, getting closer to Jesus. I got a couple. Don't do it. That's too late now. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay? Whether you are single, dating, or married, this is the foundation. Honoring God with your body. You honor God with your mind. We honor God with our actions. Everything that we do, we honor God. And what does it mean to honor? It means to regard or treat with respect and admiration. Another definition, how do we honor God? Next slide for me real quick. It means that you show God respect and love by how you live your life. You follow his teachings. You spend time with him. You make choices that show you care about what he wants. You put him first and you live your life in a way that makes him proud. We honor God. But the series is called Honor the Gift. And why is that? Well, the greatest gift that's ever been given to us is Jesus. He's the greatest gift. But there are other gifts that God gives to every single one of us. And over the next few weeks, here's where we're going in this series. In two weeks, everybody say two weeks. In two weeks, we're going to be talking about the gift that God gave us, the gift of, put it on the screen for me, the gift of sex. In two weeks, we're going to talk about that. Oh, I got some amens. I got a mm-hmm on that one. But we're going to go there because we need to talk about this in church because far too many of us have learned about this from everywhere but the church. Music and movies and your friends and your cousins who really did not even have, understand the gift that sex actually is. Next week, we're going to talk about the gift of marriage. Because we got some married folks up in here. We got some folks that want to be married. We got some folks that were married. But maybe not all of us see it truly as the gift that it actually is. And maybe because you saw some folks that it didn't look like a gift to you from afar. Right? Today we're going to look at, let us put it on the screen, the gift of singleness. The gift of singleness. And what I want to do is spend just a few moments showing you that this actually is a gift. It's a gift. Now, I know there are some that are in here that are like, it don't feel like one pastor. It feels like a curse. You don't understand. And some of y'all are like, it is a gift. And I'm glad I received that gift. I found this online that I thought was very interesting and I wanted to share these. These were some, some unfortunate things because I told you earlier, the church has not done the best job of, of sh 
teaching about how singleness is a gift. When in most churches, there are more single people than there are married. But we've put a lot of the focus on marriage. Now, I'm going to talk about marriage next week. And if you are married in here, I still want you to lean in. Now, I also want to say something to all of my married folks, okay? Please hear me. When I'm talking about the gift of singleness, I'm talking about those that are single. I'm not talking about the ones that are married, hoping that you can get that gift of singleness to get out of what you're already in. But we're going to talk about that next week. Let me stay focused, okay? These are some can, I'm going to use this word. I know my mom don't like me to use this, but mama, I'm, I'm going to use it anyway. These are some stupid things that have been said by people in the church to single people. And maybe some of these have been said to you before. If you, didn't grow, if you haven't been around the church very much, lean in because some of this you're going to be like, what? Number one, there have been, and these are real, real things. This isn't made up. This, they did a poll, and here are some of them. I'm not going to read all of them because there's a bunch. There's a sin in your life that God wants you to work out first. Once you work it out, he'll give you a spouse. <laughs> some of y'all are like, for real? Number two, you too picky. You should probably lower your standards. Anybody ever heard that before? You are only interested in men or women who are all above your level. You need to be more realistic about who you are and what kind of person <laughs> that you can expect to be interested in you. This is terrible, y'all. I'm going to skip ahead. Oh, this is for the ladies. <laughs> I pray none of y'all have heard this. And if you have, I'm so sorry. Guys are intimidated by you. The more you accomplish, the less they'll want to ask you out. Just stop thinking about it. Then it'll happen. Wow. Let me go a couple more, just a few more. Maybe you're not praying enough. That's, I'm not even going to read that one. That's, that's so messed up. It says, if you lost 20 pounds, a guy would be able to see how wonderful you are. And it goes on to say, the people on 600-pound life have, have somebody. How come you don't? I didn't make this up. This is really all. I'm reading this, y'all. Here's another one. Don't worry. You're next. I have a friend who was 45 when she got married. There's still hope for you. Loneliness is God's way of drawing you to himself. Your gift on Valentine's Day is singleness. One more. Last one. <laughs> last one. At least you can buy shoes. That's what somebody put. We have not done a good job with them. And these were all from well-meaning people within, not our church. This is not Kazon Church. I want to make that very clear. And if you have heard that by somebody at Kazon Church, point them out to me after church so I can give them a just stern talking to you. No, I'm playing. But it's important for us to understand that it really is a gift. And everything, whether it's singleness, marriage, sex, all of it is a gift from God. But the whole thing that I want us all to understand is that we've got to honor God in whatever situation that you are currently in. But can I just spend a couple minutes, because I don't have a whole lot of time, showing you that Scripture even shows us that singleness is a gift. I'm not just making this up. It's in the Word. Let's show them, Ken. Put it on the screen for me real quick. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. And this is written before I read it. You can leave it on the screen. Before I read it, I need you to understand something. That the two, um, two people in the Bible who give probably the most powerful and the most of the relationship advice that we can find in the Bible, guess what? They were single. Jesus never got married. Paul never was married. But the, and these were the two in the New Testament who gave the most relationship advice. So I just want to say that so that you don't think, well, it's easy for them to say. No. These are people who gave us godly advice. Here's what it says, 1 Corinthians 7, 7, and 8. But I wish, this is Paul, I wish everyone were single just as I am. Yet, each person has a special gift from God one kind or the other. So I say to those who aren't married and to widows, it's better to stay unmarried just as I am. This is what Paul was saying. He was like, I wish everybody was like me. Paul had learned how to be content in the situation that he was in. He's like, well, it's a gift. Everyone has been given a special gift from God. Now here's the question. How do you know that you have the gift of singleness? Does anybody want to know how 
the, what the Bible shows is how you know you have the gift of singleness. You single. That's how you know you got the gift of singleness. If you are single right now, you have the gift. Because scripture t- tells us, and I can, I, I, it's a, probably in a couple more that I'll show you, with that whatever that situation God has you in is a gift from God right now. You may not like it. You may not think it. But I want to show you that it actually is a gift. Now, please understand this. When he goes on to say to, the, to the, uh, who, those who aren't married, it's better to stay unmarried, he is not saying you should never get married. That's not what he's saying. He says because everyone has a gift. Some have the gift of merit, some don't, and that's okay. Here's another thing I want everybody to understand. The Bible never promises that everybody will get married. I know for somebody, they're like, no, but it doesn't promise you. That's why I, just, that's why I opened this whole thing up saying the two people who gave the most relationship advice in the Bible were never even married. They weren't married. It's not a promise to anyone. It is a what? Gift. And singleness is a gift. It's a gift from God. Let me show you how. Let me go ahead a little bit here. I, ta- I-, I defined all of that there. Let me show you why. Because singleness itself, according to Scripture, is a season of purpose. It's a season of purpose. Is that the next slide for me? Let's say, uh, show me the next one. Go ahead. It's the singleness of purpose. Show me the next verse here. How do I know that it's a gift? Because here's what he says. Paul, same, same chapter. I want you to be free from the concerns of this life. An unmarried man can spend his time doing the Lord's work and thinking how to please him. And this is for women, too. So when you see man, he's in, it's including women, too. An unmarried person can spend more time dedicated fully to the Lord. And look what the very next thing he says. But a married man or a married person has to think about his earthly responsibilities and how to please his wife. Now, if you are a married man, please do not respond to this because I do not want you getting elbowed or throw something at or somebody saying something to you in the car and then you're going to blame me. Don't blame your pastor. I'm just reading what the Bible says. How many of you all know? And just, just give me a look. Don't shake your head. You know this to be true. Happy wife equals a happy life. When you're single... You, ain't, you don't have to focus on, on somebody else's happiness right now. It's you and the Lord's, really the Lord's, not your own, because we're going to talk about self-control here in a little bit too, okay? Because it talks about how to please the Lord, not how to please yourself. But it's a gift. It's showing you right here. It's a gift. You are free. I can I don't have to phone. Not, not me, because I, I am married, so I'm, I'm, I'm using this as an example. You ain't got to check in. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Like me and the fellas, we want to, you know. I'm, I'm, no, you, you just go. You are free. You're not bound by the concerns of this life. It is a gift from God. Now, those of you who, who are like, yes, amen, I don't want nobody. Listen, don't, don't put marriage down just because you, you got the gift and you don't want the gift of marriage. You hold on to your gift, Right? How many of y'all like, you, you see it with kids more often than not. Two kids get, this, get a gift around the same time. And one of them will try to put the other one's gift down because theirs. That's how some of us sound. Well, I'm glad that I'm not. No, 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 no. Be glad with the gift that you've been given. Celebrate the gift that somebody else has been given. Okay, we can celebrate each other. And that's why the church is important within the church. That's why we got single folks in here. We got married folks up in here. We got all of that together because we need each other. But it is, according to Scripture, it is a gift. Now, I'm going to keep going. Next, next slide. His interests are divided. In the same way, a woman who is no longer married or has never been married can be devoted to the Lord and holy in body and spirit, but a married woman has to think about earthly responsibilities and how to please her husband. Those of you that are married know this to be true. Yes, you're pleasing the Lord, you're honoring God, but then you also have to honor the Lord by honoring your spouse. That's where your focus is at. Now, when you're single, it is focused. It's a season of purpose. God, I can honor you with my life, with my body, with my mind. 
I can do that. It's a gift that you've given me. Now, some of y'all are still looking like, I don't know, Pastor. You don't know. Sometimes you get lonely. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that's old school for some of y'all. Like, what is he talking about? What? It's old school. And that's where I want to lead us at is because how do we do this? You see, I can tell you that it's a gift, right? I can tell you that it's a gift, but I want to show you how to live out in this gift and how you can honor God with this particular gift, okay? Because you may hear it, and some of y'all, whether you like it or not, you know, wherever you may be, I want to help you with the gift that God has given you. Each week, that's my focus, is how do you honor God in whatever gift he has given you? If you're married, next week, how can we honor God with that gift? If you're single, how can we honor God with that gift? In a few weeks, with, our, with sex, how do we honor God with that gift? And I know y'all going to be here on that, on that Sunday. I just, I just, it's going to be folks all in the overflow on that Sunday. Come to church with me, Pat. Come to church on that Sunday. Pat's going to be talking about sex on that Sunday. Watch. Just watch. I'm, a, I'm calling it right now. It's going to be packed on that particular day. So how do we go about doing this? Now, how? How do we actually live out and honor God with this gift? Does anybody know how? They're like, no, that's what I'm waiting on you. Okay. Let me get into it. Number one, how do you do this? Let's show them real quick. Put it on the screen. You focus during this time on spiritual growth. No matter how you are single, by choice, by circumstance, by loss, whatever it is, this is the time that you honor and focus on spiritual growth. And many of you all are already living this out right now. There are some of you that have even told me, Pastor, I'm single, blah, blah, blah. I'm going, you know what? what I'm, a ser- I'm going to serve here at the church. You know why? Because I, there's still community that's here, and I have something to offer. And I want every person, no matter what stage of life that you were in, you have something to offer to this church and to this world. You don't have to be married to offer something. You can be offered something to God right now in your singleness. One, eight, two amens. That's okay. You do. But this is a time to focus on your spiritual growth. So, and this is for everybody. This isn't just for those who want to be married. But let me talk to them first. This is a time that you become the person that you want somebody else to be attracted to. You become a faithful follower of Jesus right now. You don't wait till you get married. Because here's why. When you get married, guess what? There, somebody brought it up. There is no such thing as 50-50. You bring 100% of yourself, and they bring 100% of themselves. Or what happens if you do bring 50-50, it's because you've given parts of yourself to other people. But we're going to get there in just a few weeks. This isn't God. You can have a piece of my love. Ain't, there is no peace. You bring your full self. So as a single person, you focus this time of of being the best follower of Jesus Christ that you can possibly be. Now, don't wait. Oh, when I get married, that's when we start going to church. No, do it now because I'm here to tell you, whatever you're doing right now, you will bring it into your marriage. If you don't want to be married and you are single by choice, this is the same as still for you, whether you want to be with somebody or not. This is a time to focus on the Lord and find out what pleases him and not what pleases yourself. Because many of you will testify to this. When you've done things just to please yourself, it has not led to great situations in your life. But I don't know one person that has done things to please the Lord that goes, man, I wish I wouldn't. I wish I would have just disobeyed. Maybe in a moment you did. But you look back and you'll go, man, I'm glad that I made that decision to follow after God. Use this time to focus solely on him. If you are single by loss, this should be this should be the most important thing because there's only one person that can comfort you in the middle of your loss. And that's Jesus. It's only him. So what do you do? You spend this time serving. You spend this time seeking his word. Here's what it tells us. uh, um, uh, Did I skip it? I may have already skipped it. Nope. Um, Sorry, y'all lost my place here. You spend this time seeking his kingdom, not seeking what you want for yourselves. Number two, what is it? How else can we go about living this? Show them the next slide for me real quick. You set healthy boundaries in your singleness. I got one person to clap up in here. Not two, not three, not four. It's cool. What do I mean by this? What are healthy boundaries? What are healthy boundaries? I'm glad that you asked. Um, 
Show them the scriptures up here. I'm not going to read all of these. Show them these, these next scriptures. I read you this one where he talked about you can be free from the concerns. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. Here's what it says. I'm saying all of this, that when you are single, this is an opportunity for you to set some boundaries. Because oh, Go back, go back, go back. Last one, last slide. I'm saying this for your benefit, not to place restrictions on you. I want you to do whatever will help you serve who? 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 Not yourself. The Lord best with as few distractions as possible. How many of y'all know we live in a distracted world? There's all kinds of distractions that you get them in your mind. You get them all in front of you. You hear them. There's distractions all around us. When you are single, and even when you're married, but I'm talking to my single folks here today. This is the opportunity to set healthy boundaries. Why? Because this is for your benefit. We want to live with as few distractions as possible. Oftentimes, we think when we have boundaries or restrictions, we think that that's like, oh, man, you, it's like you put me in chains. Like, I, I don't like all of these rules and all that. No, 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 no. Boundaries are healthy. How do I know this? Every sport has a boundary line. If you play basketball and you go across the line, the out-of-bounds line, you are out of line. You can't just dribble the ball wherever you want to. You have to focus on where the goal is. You can't be dribbling all up in the stands. Here, here's another way I know. How many of you all have ever driven on a road where there are no lines on the road? Anybody ever done? Like right up here off Jenna Station Road, they just been repaving this thing. And for a couple of weeks, there were no lines over there. I almost got hit four times. It's very dangerous when there are no lines. When you're driving in the snow and you can't see the lines, it's extremely dangerous. You can hit somebody else. Somebody else can hit you. You can end off off the road. Boundaries are good, but when you put those lines in, you know this is where I'm supposed to be. I can drive in this lane. I can, if I keep going straight, I'm good. But the moment you get out of that boundary, that's when things get dangerous. And when you're single, this is the time to set healthy boundaries. What are you going to do? And what are you not going to do? You got to make those boundaries. Because if you don't, what often, hap what often happens is you leave it up to somebody else to set those boundaries for you. And if they set them up, what I tell you, when there's no lines, somebody ends up getting hurt. Somebody ends up getting hurt. Some of you all can testify that I didn't get that. I should have got an amen across the whole place on that one. Because some of y'all know you've been all out of line, all out of the boundary. You have to set up. Now, notice I said healthy boundaries. There are some boundaries that people set up that are just, that are just crazy. But there are healthy boundaries. Somebody say healthy boundaries. Now, honoring God doesn't mean that you can't. Date or pursue a relationship. It means that your boundaries re reflect your love for God. Everything that we're doing is to do what? Honor who? Is it to honor yourself? It's all to honor God. So any boundary that you have, you have to ask, is this going to honor God? Or is, if I don't set this up, can I end up dishonoring God? Case in point, can I give you a couple, couple quick examples? I only got a few more minutes, so I got to roll through this. A couple quick examples. How do we go about doing this? Healthy boundaries. And if this is for those, again, even if you don't plan on getting into a relationship, you still need to have some healthy boundaries for people. Like, don't just, don't always call me with your problems. You know what I'm saying? Don't just call me when you just, when everything is good in your life, but I never hear from you when you're going through all your, you know, if we're going to be friends, we got to have some healthy what? Boundaries. Now, if you are going to be in a relationship and you're pursuing one, because pursuing a relationship in your singleness is not bad. The Bible says, look, whatever gift, you got to set up some boundaries. Now, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because I'm going to talk about this in two weeks. But one of those boundaries starts with an S and ends with an X. And you know what I'm talking about. But culture will tell us, don't matter. Do you. Do what pleases you. And that is the opposite of what we just read. Everything that we are doing is to please who? God. Now, if you didn't grow up in church, you've never been around church, you may not know what I'm talking about. But in Scripture, with followers of Jesus Christ, the final authority for us is not what culture says. It's not what your mama and daddy say. It's not what your homeboy, your homegirl says. It's what the Word of God says. That's the final authority for us. And scripturally, sex 
it's supposed to be. God's design for it is between a husband and a wife within marriage. But I know life happens. Not all of us knew that. I met a guy a few weeks ago. He told me that he just got saved about five years ago, and he never knew before five years ago that having sex before you were married was wrong. He didn't know, he didn't know it because everybody in his family did it. But what he learned was that no one in his family had ever set godly, healthy boundaries. They just did whatever made them feel good. And he, when I asked him, I was like, what does that look like within your family? He's like, dysfunction. That's what that looks like because God's way is the best way. The folks that I know that have waited have always said, I'm so glad I waited. The folks that didn't wait, now I have not heard one person go, man, I'm glad I didn't. (laughs) Now I'm looking around. Now some of y'all don't even want to make eye contact with me here today. (laughs) But I need you to be with me. Now I'm saying all that, but I also want to say this. There is grace and mercy and forgiveness for all of us. I don't tell you that to go like, you're going to hell, you sinner. I tell you all of that to, to help us understand that there is a better way than how we've been living. But we have to be willing to set up those healthy boundaries. So what does that look like? That may mean, and this is a boundary that my wife and I set up. When we were, this was way before we, before we got married, when we were dating, we set this up. And I said, listen, I can't be at your house after 10 p.m. Because nothing holy ever happens after 10 p.m. And those of you who laughing, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you that are not laughing, you're like, oh, man. But we set up that boundary. I'm not going to be at your crib after a certain time. It's not going to happen. Another boundary that, we, that maybe you need to set, this is a maybe. Maybe instead of y'all just dating one-on-one, you go on, you do group things. Because you already know if y'all one-on-one, you already know what's finna go down. Don't act like we not, we in church today. Come on, somebody. <laughs> set up healthy boundaries. I'm not going to stay on this one very long because that's going to come in a few weeks, okay? Make it your goal. Make it your goal that in everything that you do, you honor God. Maybe as healthy boundary is you find folks that can help hold you accountable. Here's how I want to live. I need somebody else to check in on me. But here's the thing. Somebody can only hold you accountable as you are honest. If you're accountable but you hold one little thing to the side and you don't let them in, they can't help you with that. They can't hold you accountable. But if you go to somebody and say, here's, my, here's, here's the boundaries that I want to set in my life, in my singleness. I'm setting these boundaries, okay? I'm not going to date anyone this year. Why? Because I want to take this next year to focus on the Lord. I want to get to know him more. I want to serve in church more. Get somebody to hold you accountable. When you see somebody and you're like, oh, man, I really won't. I got to get her number. Oh, man. Hey, bro, you said this year you were focusing on the Lord. I know, bro, but you didn't see her. <laughs> you, you ain't see her, though, bro. You said Not me. You said this was your boundary. Oftentimes, we don't want to let people in because we don't want to be held accountable. We want to do our own thing. But how do you honor God? You bring other people into the the situation. This is why when people actually get married, they they have to have witnesses. You have to have somebody else that will say, like, yeah, we with you on this. We're going to hold you accountable. In your singleness, how much more should you have it? I need people to help hold me accountable to following, to honor God. I want to honor God in everything that I do, my thoughts, my words, my actions. But you can't do it alone. That's why Jesus didn't even walk by himself. If the Son of God said, I'm not going to do life by myself, why do so many of us do it? Jesus had 12. He said he rolled with them. He held them accountable, called them out in love. You get that. Third thing, how do we live this out? How do we live out the gift of singleness? First, what do we do? We focus on spiritual growth. Secondly, we set healthy boundaries. Thirdly, we find contentment in Christ. Now, this really comes to the part where we talked about that 50-50. So many oftentimes, people will say, I just need somebody to complete me. Meaning that you are not a fulfilled person. You don't need nobody to fulfill you. Contentment doesn't come from a relationship with a person. Contentment comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's what it says. Show me the next verse here. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you 
everything that you need. There is nobody else that can give you everything that you need. Even if you're married, here's what I want you to know. Your spouse does not bring about all of your contentment. Now, the whole happy wife, happy life, that's real. That's real. Don't get me wrong. But all of the contentment in your life cannot come from your wife being all right. When you're single, all of your contentment can't come from being in a relationship with somebody. Your contentment must come from Jesus. Why? Because he gives you everything that you need. Other versions say he will add all these other things to you. Not another person. Not a relationship. Not a partner. Jesus. He says, if you find contentment in me, I'll give you everything that you need. I'll give you the ability to say to set up those healthy boundaries. I'll give you the ability to say no when you get that late night phone call. I'll give you the ability to say no when you just need to get a release. I will give you the ability to do I will give you everything that you need in whatever circumstance or situation that you are in. If you'll come to me. In your singleness. Are you finding contentment in him or in a substance, in a person, on a website, in a feeling? Where are we finding our contentment? How do we find true joy in Jesus Christ? We go to him with everything that we have, and he lifts us up. He gives us everything that we need. There is power in being able to say no to temptation. Let me tell you something. When you're able to say no to something that's been tempting you for a long time, you feel like a superhero. You're like, oh, 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 if I can do this, I can do anything. Anything's possible. That's how we feel when you're able to say no to that temptation. When you give in to that temptation, how do you feel? <sighs> Guilt, shame, all of that. That only comes through Jesus Christ. Now, I know some of you all up here going, well, that's easy for you to say, Pastor. You've been married. That's true. I've been married for 18 years. I haven't been single since I was 24 years old, and I'm 43. But everything that I'm telling you here today is I am preparing to tell my daughters over the next 10 to 15 years to honor God in their singleness, to become who God's called them to be, whether they want to get married or not. I want them to honor God. And that's my, that's my thing for every one of you all here. What is more important, you honoring yourself or honoring God? And why is it so important for us to honor God? Like, why? Why do I need to honor him versus just doing what I want to do for myself? There's a reason why we took this today. This. What this represents is why we honor God. You see, he didn't look and go, man, they'll figure it out. He said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to give them everything that they need. I'm going to die for them because I love them. I am going to give them the strength that they need. And here's Jesus. Jesus was a single man for all 33 years of his life. And y'all go, well, he was God, though. He was still a human. And scripture tells us that he was tempted in every single way that you and I are tempted as well. Yet he did not sin. And that Jesus lives inside of you. That's why we honor God. See, we honor him not just because the preacher tells us to. We honor him because he literally gave everything for you. He died for you to show you how to live your life. He said, I'm going to die to my own desires. How do I know this? The night that he was going to be crucified, he said, not my will, but your will be done. I don't want to die. And many of us, we don't want to die to ourselves. In whatever circumstance we're in, singles don't want to die to themselves. Married folks don't want to die to themselves. In your sexuality, you don't want to die to yourself. You just want to live for whatever, for yourself. But Jesus said, I'm willing to die for you so that you can have true freedom that's what makes him worthy of honor. That's why we say we honor this gift of singleness. And he doesn't force any of this on us. He just says, listen, I did that. I did the work. I set the example. And if you will follow me in whatever circumstance or situation that you were in, I'm going to be with you. Not your will, but his will. How do you honor God in your singleness? Not my will, but your will. How do you honor God in your marriage? Not my will, but your will. When it comes to sex, how do you honor God? Not my will, but your will. And this really goes for every part of our life. In your finances, in your parenting, 
in your, on your jobs, in every circumstance in your life, whatever situation you are in, not my will, but your will be done, Lord. Help me to honor this gift of singleness. Help me to honor it by living for you because you set the example for me. So wherever you may be, if you're single right now and you want to get married, set those boundaries and honor him. Not your will, but his will. If you're single and you don't want to get married, hallelujah, not your will, but his will. If you're single because of loss, not your will, his will. Every day, honor God. Come back next week. We'll talk about how to honor God in our marriages. Come back in two weeks. We'll talk about how to honor God sexually. Not our will, but his will. You're going to hear that every single week throughout this series. Not your will, but his will. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Help us today to live this out. Those that are single, God, strengthen them today in their singleness. Thank you for this gift. Help us to honor you in whatever season that we are in. For those that are single, I pray that you would help them to see the beauty and the purpose of their singleness, to draw closer to you. God, I even pray that, Lord, for this entire community, that those that are married would be able to encourage those that are single, to invite them into even community so that they can show what godly marriages look like. Not so that people may want to get married, but that's just to set an example that we are a community. Whether we're married, whether we're single, no matter what season that we're in, that we come together as a church community to encourage and uplift each other. But thank you for this gift of singleness. Help those that are single to live this out daily for you, Lord. Help, them, help, them, help us all to say, not my will, but your will be done. Help us to honor you in every form and facet of our lives. Help us to honor you in our thoughts, in our words, in our actions. And God, I pray that that stays in our minds all this week. Not my will, but your will. I want to do this, but not my will, your will be done. I want to say this, but not my will, your will be done. Help us to honor you as we honor the gift that you've given us. It's in Jesus' name. As we keep praying, there may be some of you all here today, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. I want to give you the opportunity to do that. But I'm going to do it a little bit differently here today. Normally, we do this whole thing in the middle of service, but I really think that there is a there's an opportunity um, for... Um, for some of you all to take a step. And I, I, oftentimes that doing it in a big room like this is very difficult, it's very challenging. But scripture tells us that if you are ashamed of him, he will actually be ashamed of you. We don't want to be ashamed. We don't want to be scared of making these decisions in front of other people. We don't want to do that. So if you're here today and you're like, man, I have, I have not lived a life that has honored God. In any way, I didn't even know I needed to honor God. So, But today, after hearing this message, I want Jesus who gave his life for me. I want to be set free. I want to be made new. I want to know how to make healthy boundaries. I want to have a new mind, a new heart. I want to give my life to you, Jesus. If that is you, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hand high for me to see you here today so that you can start a brand new life in Jesus Christ. Is there anyone here? I see a hand right there. Praise God. Is there anybody else? You have an opportunity to do this. Maybe that's you watching online. Church, we're going to pray together with those who lifted up their hand. Everybody repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sin. I admit that I'm a sinner and I needed you as my Savior. Jesus, you're the Lord of my life. You died and you rose to set me free. Thank you for that. Fill me with your love. Give me a new heart and a new mind. And teach me how to honor you all the days of my life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's celebrate his own church.